Greetings, fellow humans. Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today we've got an interesting one. So the other day I was browsing Amazon. I was actually waiting uh, to pick up an order. Uh, so I was just lazily browsing Amazon and a $29 TKL came up. Now it did not, it only listed it as, as the M87, did not list the Zing Ming, which if some of you don't know, they're the ones behind certain keyboards that are starting to pick up, especially in aluminum keyboards. Um, they appear to be the manufacturer, but I don't know. The uh, Chinese market doesn't really make it very clear if someone's a reseller, a marketing firm, a actual manufacturing plant. So a lot of these are being sold under different brands. Anyway, when I saw the listing, I was like, hmm. And I put it in my cart and said, save for later. And then I want to say it was the next day or it could have been later on that day. I was browsing Reddit and I saw on keyboard that somebody shared this as well. And they said, this must be a scam, right? $29, 20% off. And I was like, hmm, well, I mean, it's Amazon. What What's the chances, you know, that I'm really going to get ripped off? I mean, if I don't get anything or if I get something that's, you know, not as described, I'll just send it back. So I went ahead and made the purchase. It arrived and I was like, wait a minute, this is a Zingmeng M87. I only paid $23 for it because it's $29.99. That's what it's listed at still. And I'll have links down below. But at the time when I purchased it, that was just a few days ago, it had a 20% off coupon. So it took $6 off the price. So it was $23.99, 24 bucks uh, before shipping and taxes. So I was like, all right, I got to pick it up because it, in the um, exploded view of the keyboard, it showed PET layer, IXPE, you know, gasket mount, PC plate. And I'm like, all that for $23? And it does kind of look like an ALA F87, except obviously this one is wired, I do believe, though it is pro. Um, usually when it's a, a keyboard has the pro moniker attached to it, it usually indicates that it's wireless or it has the wireless functionality as well as wired. So, but I don't think that's the case in this situation. So I went ahead and I picked it up. I it, So now that I've got it here, I decided, hey, let's go ahead and build it from scratch and see what we've got. I mean, I'm going to take a look at the keyboard a little bit, but I'm going to load it up with some uh, EF grayish uh, tactile switches that were sent over to me by pulling keys. They're a nice tactile for a good price. Uh, I don't know why Gatoron came up with this EF line, but there's a couple of them on there and they're already gaining some steam as good switches at a very affordable prices. I also got this keycap set, which has kind of just been lingering for a moment. I purchased it from AliExpress. I believe it's listed for 15 or $16. PBT, double shot, um, DSA profile. And I think it's called Minimalist Gray. I'll put links to these as well down below. So I know I usually like to do stock ones with Cherry, but those have really been calling my name. I believe this is a black keyboard. So I just want to just wanted to mix them up and and do a nice little. Let's see how chunky, clacky, thocky, marbly this keyboard can sound. I do like how these tactiles sound. So let's see what we've got. All right, so this is sold by Sermon, and I've seen Sermon on Amazon. I think I've actually bought a keyboard from them, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but they're basically just a store on uh, Amazon that is reselling a whole bunch of different brands. But there's the keyboard. It looks like it has that standard customization software that we've seen in a lot of the keyboards as of recent. And it has a link that you can um, type in your browser to go download the software. Uh, we do have the Zing Men user manual, and it does appear to be in English as well as Chinese. So we'll have to take a look at that in a moment. Then included with it, we have, open this box without tearing it. We have a rubberized USB-C to USB-A cable, no tail. We have a standard wire switch and keycap puller, and that's that. And then we have the keyboard. 
and the keyboard does come with a dust cover, which is much appreciated nowadays. Now, one thing that I am noticing off the bat, oh, no, it does have LEDs. They're south facing. They're just being covered by the IXP. When I first looked at it at a certain angle, I'm like, I don't see any LEDs, but they do seem to be covered up. So taking the dust cover and setting it aside, we have a black plastic frame. We have a Windows and a Mac switch, as well as an on and off button. So not sure what we need that when the keyboard is wired only, but I guess we'll go ahead and leave it on. Um, it feels light, though. I mean, it is a bare bone plastic keyboard, but does not quite feel as light as some other keyboards um, that I've dealt with. We'll have to see what it weighs. And it does have a shortcut menu on the back as to some of the functionality, though it is in Chinese, but we can use Google Translate on your phone. We do have some actual interesting lines there. We have two sets of feet for three different typing angles. And we have an interesting, it's not just your boring all old, you know, just flat. It has a, it has some, some design to it. It has some cuts, some, I'm not a designer, so I don't know exactly what these would call. I mean, it's like a bevel, no, not a bevel. I don't know. It looks different. So it's something that, I mean, even from the side, you're going to be able to tell that it's a different keyboard. So we do seem to have a PC gasket plate with flex cuts. And like I said, there does appear to be an LED down below there, but I don't want to be tearing it up. Now, this also appears to be uh, not punched out like uh, with the GMK 67 series. Although the center hole is pu punched out. Oh, actually, never mind. The only holes that aren't punched out is where the switch pins are going to go. And the switch pins usually take care of that. So I want to see. Yeah, I'm kind of concerned about that switch. I wanted to see about opening it up. I'm not sure if that's actually the spot to opening is. But this is not working for me. Let me find Flatter spudger. Yep, that's where it is. So let's go ahead. All right. It's not the easiest one to open, I'll say that. Oh, so you're going to be a little stubborn, huh? You could give in eventually. All right. Well. That was fun. So that little edge difference there just made it very interesting. So what do we have here? We have a PC plate. I'll pull it carefully because I think, yep, we do have a daughter board and we actually have two cables going to it from the daughter board. Um, looks to be one for the Windows Mac switch and one for the on and off switch. The PCB does have flex cuts and it actually has a radio. Is this actually a wireless keyboard? It can't be. There's no battery in here. So I wonder if we hooked up a battery to it, but I don't see a spot to hook up a battery. This actually does seem a lot like the um, Ala F87 keyboard. I wouldn't be surprised if, if it has some, uh, if it has, if it shares manufacturers. Should be easy enough to put back together, but oh, it's an HFD. I've seen HFD uh, make some QMK um, repositories, and I think I want to say I could be mistaken. I think they're the same manufacturer as Octo, but I'm not positive. And it does look like we have LEDs on there, but that is definitely a radio, though it is missing some components. There would be the uh, IC for the radio, and uh, there's a couple of other components I can't quite read. So this is uh, actually, I gotta say, quite interesting. And <laughs> they label the uh, JST connectors, COM1 and COM2, like they're actual RS-232 serial. 
connections. Um, that is, uh, that's interesting. But there we see the switch, or the switches. And we do have a, a light open cell foam, as well as some silicone down below, which is probably giving it that bit of heft that we can feel. Let me go ahead and put this back together. We do have some <clears throat> sock style gaskets here that, I mean, they're not super substantial, but they're not nothing either. I mean, they do give a little bit of something. There's definitely some flex to it. So we do have some pretty decent RGB because you can actually see it through the IXPE sheet. Don't know why they didn't cut that out. Um, I'm wondering if this was like a big order for a particular manufacturer and then at the last minute they said no and that's why they're just being sold as is you see the rgbs here that get connected up to this diffuser i'm wondering if we have control over those we'll have to take a look at it but let's go ahead and close it back up honestly i prefer the the these kind of keyboards these are usually easier to get into. You don't have to worry about any screws stripping plastic. For the stabilizers, we do have plate-mounted stabilizers, and I forgot to look while I was in there, but I don't think I saw the ability for screwing. No, nope. does not appear to be the ability for screwing stabilizers, but these are some of the newer ones, and they are lubricated just slightly enough, and also on the elbows. And as you can see, they're actually fairly well attacked. There's a little bit of wiggle, but not as much as I'm used to seeing on stock boards. So because we're hot swapped, that can easily be fixed with just a little bit of tape so that when it locks down, it won't have that, that tiny bit of wiggle. But I'm gonna I'm gonna guess they're gonna sound pretty good just off the bat stock. All right, so let me go ahead and unplug it again. Like I said, uh, Pulling Key sent me over some of their EF grayish tactile. This is a very fun tactile. It's in the medium category. It has a capital P. So, like, not really any pre-travel. It just has that bump, and then it kind of drops off down a cliff. So, it's like a capital P. At least that's what it feels like. Um, and it has a very snappy comeback as well as a nice bottom out. It's almost like it's glass-like or marbles on glass-like. So this is quickly becoming one of my favorite like medium uh, tactile switches. And it does have an actual light diffuser there, even though it kind of looks like it's frosted. You can kind of see how it allows light to go through. So we have a south-facing PCB hot swap wired, but... I'm going to guess this is going to sound pretty good stock. I'm going to go ahead and load it up with the Gator on El uh, Grayish. I'll keep wanting to call them Elfish because EF, like Elfish, but Gator on EF Grayish tactile switches. And as far as I know, they only come in one spring weight. And I'm going to load up these uh, minimalist gray double shot PBT DSA keycaps. We'll come back, talk about it, and do a sound test. Let's do it. Just the specs. Today we took a look at the Zingmen M87 Pro, a wired TKL available from Amazon. It is a south-facing RGB 
3 and 5 pin hot swap compatible PCB that includes both the PET and IXPE layers on top of the PCB. Both the PCB and the PC plate have flex cuts. It also has a gasket mounted PC plate. It includes minimal window software that has basic layers as far as momentary and toggle. It comes weighing in at 813 grams fully loaded with switches and keycaps. And the chin of this keyboard sits at 20 millimeters above the typing surface while the back sits at 32 millimeters providing for a default typing angle of six degrees. Raising the first set of fold-out feet will take the back up to 39 millimeters and change your angle of typing to 10 degrees. Using the final set of fold-out feet will raise the back up to 46 millimeters and change your typing angle to 12 degrees. The MSRP on this keyboard is currently $29.99, though there does appear to be coupons that appear from time to time for 20% off, bringing the price of this keyboard down to $23.99. All right, here we are with the built um, M M87 Pro from Zingmang, but like I said, it's a Samsung, Samrita, ah, can't remember all these made up words, Sermon. <laughs> That's the store that it came from. So. Um, I'm actually quite surprised with these keycaps. The number of um, extra keys that it has, like the smaller shift, um, the delete, uh, the small tab, the small caps, I think that this might actually fit on a staggered 40% like my ACR Top 40. I'll have to come back and give that a look um, because I know... Uh, can't remember his name, Stonecutter. One of the users on Budget Keeps was looking for a staggered 40% kit, and uh, there wasn't too many that we could find. If this one actually fits that, I'd be surprised. But they actually have, which I like, you can actually go with the arrows, or you can go with the actual up, left, down, right, the actual words, which I don't know. I kind of like it. I think it's clean. I like the legends on them. And For being stock, honestly, doesn't sound all that bad. It's a little bit clackier um, than I would normally prefer, but I am confident that with a little bit of modding, I can get this keyboard to sound good. Um, it's it's honestly for sub thirty dollars. I I cannot think of a keyboard that even comes close to matching this. Um, because, I mean, even like the C3 Pro, although they did just release a hot swap RGB version. The one that I got a while back was the one with the red backlight and the soldered switches, which was nice. But we're still talking, I think, $38.99. Um, I believe that the new one is $45, but don't quote me on that. I may pick that one up and do a comparison. But for a TKL, now... Uh, it's got the closed source software, which, I mean, it's just like many others we've got out there. So, it's it does appear, though, it does have at least one function layer, and it has momentary and toggle. I, do have, I did have to check a couple of times with some of these keys, because, uh, especially like the O and the X and everything, and I think I got the profile right, because some of them, it just wasn't looking right on, because I had them either flipped or sideways. But... I've got these on here now. I've got to say that I actually like them for fifteen. I, like I said, I think they're fifteen or sixteen dollars. I'm honestly surprised not only at the kitting, but at how decent these are. They're bigger legends. Uh, they're DSA, which is basically a, a non-contoured SA. Um, it's a little bit taller than XDA, um, but it's kind of like a mix cross between XDA and SA. If I had to give it a description. But stabilizers sound nice. Look at that space bar. I mean, a sub $30 keyboard with a space bar that sounds this good? Come on, give me a break. Now, you might have noticed that I was using 
a spudger. A lot of the newer keyboards that come uh, with, you know, flexi, their PC plates, their flex cuts, um, they're just, you know, meant to give bounce. They're going to have a bit of too much flex at first. That's why I use this in order to, because I mean, when you have a switch, you know, you're getting the pins. The pins have to go into the hot swap socket, obviously. But both the front and the back of the switch have little tabs, and they have to get locked into the plate. Um, otherwise, you're going to have some issues. I've, I've read of a lot of people saying, oh, some of my keys don't work or the keys aren't flat because it's not in there. It might be locked to the PC plate, but not to the switch or might be in the switch, but not properly locked into the PC plate because it pushes down. So having something to give it a little bit of leverage. And also once you get the top, getting some of the bottom rows out, it starts evening, evening out the middle. So it makes it a little bit easier to uh, pop them in. But obviously as with any other hot swap board, uh, be gentle, be careful. Don't put too much pressure. Or if you're unsure, open it up and support each of the hot swap sockets from behind as you insert the switches. Anyway, um, I got to say, I just wanted to take a quick look at this to see how nice it was. And I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test. Um, and we will, um, I don't know, this is a, this is a nice keyboard. I definitely will come back to this. I'm going to mod it. I may actually, there's a couple things that I'd like to do. I think I'm going to go with Kill Mat to really make it feel substantial. And the Tempest Tape Mod. And I may go with some different switches. Because these are, in here, they're a little bit, a little bit. They're like on the fence between Thaki and Clacky. For stock switches, stock keycaps, and a stock sub $30 TKL South Facing Hot Swap Gasket Mounted PC Plate Keyboard. Honestly, I can't complain. The market is definitely getting heated. The competition is, <laughs> is growing. We continue to see boards that are just amazingly priced. I mean, I saw a Sugar 65. I'd buy one, but I've already got a couple of them for $32 on AliExpress. It was a super deal, but $32 with free shipping for a Sugar 65. An aluminum 65% with a knob. That's crazy. And there's a new one coming out, Lucky 65, that appears to be it, but also it appears to be very similar, I should say, to the Sugar 65, but it is three mode. So um, I will have one of those on the way once they are out so that I can do a review for you guys. So if you, have, you guys have any comments or any questions, anything you'd like for me to cover when I do that review, please let me know. If you have any suggestions on modifications for this one, let me know and perhaps I'll take that into consideration when I come back to it. Like I said, today is just a quick review. I just wanted to show you how much, of the, how much keyboard you can get for sub $30 nowadays. Now this is Amazon US. I haven't checked any of the other Amazon sites. I'll try to see if I can find it on there and include links. But I think that I've only seen Sermon. Although I think Sermon has a store on AliExpress. I'll have to check there as well. But I actually looked this up on AliExpress. And this is one of the first times I've seen something that is cheaper on Amazon than it was AliExpress. This same keyboard, and it was wired, not because there's a three mode one out there as well. Um, the cheapest I was able to find it was for $37, $38 for this keyboard, what appears to be the exact same keyboard that's on Amazon. I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with the stock sound test of the Zingmen M87 Pro uh, sub $30 TKO that honestly, I'm still kind of just like, what? What? How much? Like, I just can't believe that a TKL that is this loaded as far as, you know, the, the dampening on top of the plate, the gasket mounting, uh, the PC plate, um, all of the layers on top of the PCB. It's just, there's a lot of keyboard for not a lot of money. I think the sound test should be enjoyable, but I'm pretty sure that I can make this keyboard sound even better. It feels great. It has just enough of the bounce for me. It's not like a trampoline, but 
gives me what I need. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. I will put a link down to this keyboard uh, below in case you guys are interested in picking one up. And I will go ahead and, um, like I said, I'll put this, move this up on my list to do modifications for because I really think we can make it sound better. But I'd love to hear you guys' suggestions of what you'd like for me to do when I come back to it. Anyway, until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.